this landslide, which we used to refer to as a hazel landslide, uh, has been active periodically for a long time. Um, these are just pictures from 1965, 1984, 1970, 1991 that show what the slide looked like from aerial photography at these different times. Um, you can see that the headscarp was here, the river was here, there's a big zone here with no vegetation, which is indicate, an indicator that the, this is all <laughs> mud and sand there. It was very active. And then by here, by 1984, trees had grown up over that. And look what happened between, um, oh, no, by 1970, I can see it was active. By 1984, it had been pretty much overgrown. There was a little bit of activity here in 1991. And then in 1996, um, it failed again. I don't have a photograph of that one. But it's uh, been periodically active um, as long as we've been watching it. And I saw I have reports that go back to 1952. Um, so the, it tends to, there's a big plateau up here, uh, probably several hundred feet above the river. Um, a big block will fail. It will slide down, produce mud that then sort of oozes down to the river. The river eats into the toe of that material. Um, Things tend to move a little bit every year because it's just mud. It um, oozes down towards the river. The river eats a toe. So the geometry of the landslide area is changing year to year. And the stability of the landslide, therefore, evolves year to year. And the river will get pushed over when the landslide fails, uh, then gradually eat its way back. And then the landslide will fail again. And that's what we've observed um, at least three times since uh, 1967. The houses were built along this road. I think some of them have been here for a very long time, but some of them have been constructed um, recently. And then after the landslide failed in 2006, there was active construction going on uh, along this part of the road. I don't remember what time of year the landslide uh, had failed and blocked the river that time, but I went out with the uh, members of the Stilaguamish tribe, and we had to drive up, and we walked in through Steelhead, uh, drive and waded across the river and, and traversed, a, we walked around on the debris at that time. And even though the slide had just recently occurred, there were carpenters busy working on houses, uh, building new houses um, on the road at that time, which I was rather surprised to see. And um, the Army Corps of Engineers then uh, excavated a channel to, so the water from the river had a place to go that would not <laughs> continue to erode into the area where the houses were. Well, in some cases, people are uninformed. They just don't know that they're living or building a house in a place that is potentially at risk. In other cases, I suspect people do know, but uh, they're not going to live there. They're going to sell the house, or um, they're willing to ignore the risks and uh, carry on. Now, I think there's... Uh, uh, Local governments also bear some responsibility because uh, zoning um, will preclude people from, or could potentially preclude people from building houses and constructing roads in places that are potentially at risk. Landowners are reluctant to not be allowed to do what they want to do on their lands, and oftentimes rightly so, but uh, there's always, I suspect there are often land or lawsuits and um, things that make it very difficult for county regulators to uh, enforce the, the zoning rules that uh, would be appropriate. Well, although this is a, a really sad event, um, I hope that perhaps it will uh, make people more cognizant of the potential for grave risks and um, make them more, make landowners in particular more amenable to potential changes in zoning that might uh, say it's not a good idea to live in a floodplain or to live in the, the track of where a landslide could potentially uh, run out and, and uh, be a danger.